So good afternoon to all. I am Professor Pratap Kumar Patel from ASB University. I welcome you all to the 37th webinar on corporate social responsibility challenges. So this is organized by our School of Business. And today, as all of you know, the topic is corporate social responsibility challenges. And in this particular webinar, we have we are having four panel members. The first panel member is Dr. G. P. Rao, founder of Good People Relations. Sir is from New Delhi. Sir has the former chief of Human Resources and Management Services at Reliance Group. Our second panelist is Professor Prakula Kumar Bhav, the general manager and state head of Sports Social Foundation. Which is looking after the corporate social responsibility and sustainability at the JK Paper Mills, Odisha. Today, our third panelist is Dr. Santos Kumar Mishra, Deputy General Manager, Public Relations and Corporate Social Responsibility at Tata Reflectors Limited, Odisha. Today, our fourth panelist is Mr. Pramod Kumar Sau, Additional General Manager. Human Resources and Corporate Social Responsibility at National Thermal Power Corporation Limited, Corporate Center, Noida. I welcome all the four panelists to today's webinar, that is Corporate Social Responsibility Challenges. Before I invite the panelists one by one, I, I would like to introduce about the today's particular topic, that is Corporate Social Responsibility Challenges. As all of you know, the corporate social responsibility does not have a universal accepted definition. The core of the concept, however, is structured around the belief that businesses have a sense of responsibility towards society and the people from whom they derive their success. In countries such as India, where economic integration and social inclusion are imperative forces that derive the masses towards growth and development, CSR has become an integral and impactful part of corporate landscape. The growing significance attached to corporate social responsibility in this ever-changing world cannot be undermined. The subject of CSR has evolved during the last two decades from philanthropic activity to integrating the interest of the business with that of the community in which it operates. By exhibiting socially, environmentally and ethically, responsible behavior in governance of its operations, the business can generate value and long-term sustainability for itself while making positive contribution in the betterment of the society. So this is the brief introduction about today's particular topic that is corporate social responsibility challenges. So before I hand over the podium to our first speaker, I would like to introduce him for this particular webinar. Today, our first speaker is Dr. G. P. Rao, the founder of Good People Relations and the former former chief of Human Relations Group, that is in the area of human resources and management services. Sir is having experience of 37 years in human resources and general management with Steel Operate India Limited, JK Organization, Villa, and Reliance Industries. Sir has also appellated with various awards like Outstanding Contribution Award from National Human Resource Development Network, HR Professional of the Year Award, and HR Leadership Excellency Award at Singapore. Char has also got Archivers mm -hmm. Award at Colombo and in New Delhi. Got participated at the Silver Jubilee Conference of National Human Resource Development Network. So, sir, I would like to welcome you to say few words on today's topic. I request all the participants to mute their audio and video and put their doubts or any question on the chat box. Thank you. Thank you. Thank sir, you, please. Professor. Thank you, Professor Pati. Uh, good afternoon to all the panelists, teachers, and students. I would request everyone to mute yourselves. Uh, I have got a small uh, presentation. Uh, uh, I will share my presentation. If uh, you have any problem in uh, 
not able to see you let me know okay uh, this is my welcome slide uh, uh, a disclaimer see because on this platform we have got uh, representatives from credible companies and we also know a lot of good companies talk, do a lot of good things so i am making a disclaimer when we talk about challenges we should not lose sight of the good work done by many the intention is to identify the areas of improvement and in no way is a criticism or a negative perspective so i always I, with that respect to all those people all those companies all those ngos who are doing a great great job great job my gratitude to them now my challenge number 1 in csr is from the corporates okay there are uh, i have put three challenges corporate ngos and the government only three challenges so my first set of challenges from the corporates so this is based on research we found that the csr team itself is a challenge there are many private sector companies somebody uh, who is not keeping well in the line department or some hr person are uh, not ready to move to another location so they make him csr csr is a specialized department a specialized function a person can be from any other department but he has to be trained and he should have that interest to do that job this is challenge number 1 uh separately if you ask me i'll give you the names of the companies also number 2 is the tenure of the perspective in corporates people do programs for 2 months 3 months 4 months no it doesn't work you go to tata you go to birla you go to j l c they have a long term perspective anything they do this one month two month three months perspective projects they are not csr they are temporary reactive on the field those those are not csr is continuous social responsibility corporate social responsibility the continuous social responsibility the third thing is the competence of the people see when we say competence of the people in the team itself we need a competence of project we need a competence of finance evaluating a project we need a competency of working with rural areas working with ngos that competency is required the fourth is bias for established ngos most corporates if they want to assign a project to an ngo they want acha or uh, tell me wo kaha pe kaam kiya tha acha unka experience pucho acha kaun hai let's see if you only give it to established ngos when will these small ngos rural based ngos working hard passionate competent young people when will they get this opportunity so this bias is a challenge and the last is some of the corporates they tell the ngos how to do it this ngo is doing a work and water they know it better no the corporate will start giving instructions no you have to do it here you have to do it there this rigidity is a challenge so last one is it's reaction based covid has happened so we will distribute oximeters no that is reaction csr the long term csr sustained csr is improving the water improving health improving hygiene improving the education so those are different so these are all reaction these are the challenge list of challenges from the corporates okay now i'll go to the second set of challenges from the ngos so based on my study uh, in fact i have owned my own ngo uh, branch also so this is the challenge i see from the ngos ngos have mushroomed particularly after that law came the 2% of the profit before tax uh ngo companies have to put money in the social responsibility ngos have mushroom like anything it was very very easy to form an ngo so number of ngos in india become hundreds thousands thousands this is one challenge everybody can make an ngo the second challenge the competency they don't know anything about projects they don't know anything about the need of the community they don't know how to set a plan or they don't know how to do a project plan they don't know how to involve people no competency at all the third is ethics i will again tell you in person if you want ngos the ngos percentage based give a one crore project i i'll tell me how much you want so they want to ready to pay so ethics is the challenge 
and the last is sustainability they do a project for one year six months they close down and go then of course on paper they'll show but they don't work they're not sustainable this is my second list of uh, challenges third list is from the government the government thank you sorry i'm talking about the government number one the structure there is no department there is no ministry where which controls ngo separately you need a focus for that like education we have focus uh, we have transport there is a focus so similarly there should be a focus for the this corporate community development separate for working with the ngos the second is the governance the audit the moment the audit happens some corruption things come in so real real governance real real audit that the money allotted by the corporates are reaching the community in the manner it was intended to be that kind of competent governance is required it's not there empowering the government local governments empowering the local institutions that's not happening that's a challenge and the last is the uh, government is not doing anything around uh, training the corporates training the ngos training the community leaders to make the projects uh, work better so these are the three sets of challenges i will end with one slide called path forward or way forward uh, number one i we are we are recommending that there should be a focused ministry number two is there should be a competent advisory board like people from tata birla those kind of people or uh, see very established ngos or established consultants or established finance experts instead of project experts such people should be on the board they should organize training of the ngos of the ncsr teams there should be an r and d and projects many times we don't know what projects are important for example reclamation of land is a very good project uh, or rain water harvesting is a good project so whereas we do piecemeal so we think we if you distribute uh, uh, mass so that's the job that's not the job the job is preventive health are you doing anything are you doing anything around hygiene so those are all uh, the r and d and projects so that different projects can be think, thought about and a strong governance and recognition small or big different types of ngos have their large ngo medium size you know uh, small ngos every sector government should go on recognizing the good work done by them if you give the awards only to the big ngos then will be short small rural based community based ngos will go so these are the way forward i have recommended i'll stop here and then i don't know about what the structure of uh, putting the questions uh, either you can do it now or you can do it later i give it to uh, professor patel i'll stop here i'm stopping here professor patel thank you thank you sir thank you sir for your nice delivery sum i request all the audience to put their questions on the chat box at the end of the session we will discuss each of these questions in the question and answer session thank you sir now i would like to request our second panelist professor prakul kumar dhav so before i hand over the podium to him i would like to introduce mr professor prakul kumar dhav Professor Prakul Kumar Dhaw is the general manager and state head of SPOS Social Foundation and corporate social responsibility and sustainability at JK Paper Mills, Odisha. Sir is also member of CII, Confederation of Indian Industries, State Council, Odisha, and Eastern Regional CSR and Steel Committee, Kolkata. Sir is also the global mentor of the Climate Reality Project of USA. And is national coordinator for climate disaster, poverty, and livelihood at New Delhi. Sir is an alumnus of Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. Sir is having 32 years of experience in corporate governance, environmental sustainability, and social transformations. Sir is also a media face on development of subjects, especially on corporate social responsibility, climate change, sustainability in India. Sir is also currently an adjunct professor in different universities. Sir has also practices in transformational CSR in India, which is taken as a model for others to replicate. He is the CSR subcommittee member of state government of Odisha and CSR state council. Sir, I would like to welcome you for today's particular webinar, and I request you to deliver 
few words. Thank you, sir. Sir, please. Okay. Thank you, Pratap Babu. <clears throat> I really feel very happy to be part of the thing, a part of the deliberation today. Unfortunately, I don't have any presentation because I have lost my elder father in the morning and I am in Raigada. I am not able to participate his funerals in the show. And uh, having said that, uh, I think already uh, Dr. Rao has already set the tone on the challenges of a CSR uh, practice in India. I have two, three critical points to share with you. First, a CSR in India today is a law. And the views I'm expressing here, uh, it's not entirely my company's view, or uh, it's out of my research and experience uh, in the field. Let me tell you that uh, when we say the corporate social responsibility, we have got two dimensions uh, in the responsibility. One is uh, before profits. It's very, very important. And after profits. After profit, you have got 2% uh, you know, uh, net profit uh, of your three preceding years of net profit is what all about. And most of the people today are talking about that. But the aspiration and spirit of CSR is beginning from your business and operational practice where it flows. It, it may be social inclusiveness, it may be, it may be your environmental sustainability, it may be transformation. So there lies the problem. So now I think I have uh, been talking to international audience and many of the companies and CEOs and the government, uh, you know, uh, delegate are talking about are facing the problem. Because when expectations are increasing, because as you know, uh, after uh, 2013, when the Indian Company Act uh, uh, 2013 amended, and from 1st April 2014, CSR rule comes, and that is the time when most of the international bilateral supports also, you know, not been accepted. The NGOs, which is a bigger structure, I mean, more than 6 million um, NGOs uh, are in India, you know, operating so or many development things. Now, immediately that development agenda got shifted to CSR and the expectation increased. Expectations of two types, you know. Well, company has, it's a business imperative. Companies cannot uh, move away from the responsibility. While it's a business imperative, you have to make it as a culture within a, a company, you know, uh, operations. That's one. Secondly, you have to take two dimensions, the post-profit and pre-profit. And pre-profit is very, very important. Now, if you see today, the trends, most of the most of the corporates are focusing their, you know, peripheral CSR more rather than the other things. I know the big big companies are contributing to the government of India, PM Care or CM Fund, CM Relief Fund kind of thing. But the challenge is you have to make it's a real brand in terms of social inclusiveness, sustainability, environment, uh, you know, uh, uh, sustainability and transformation. I think there lies the problem. The project's been defined in section 135 and uh, schedule uh, 7. Need to be critically defined and designed. That is there where lies the problem because after practicing for the last 5-6 years in the ground, what I see the projects are all, uh, you know, goes as a as an event mode kind of thing rather than strategic for social change or sustainable kind of things. So now the the aspiration is a transformation. Aspiration is localizing the SDG goals in CSR and again bringing out the you know a sustainable livelihood, the health, whatever things are there. So I think most important part is we must know the non csr uh, uh, you know uh, the actors available in the locality there lies the government government has huge funds which remain idle in the department so the convergence with the csr is one of the major challenge if that can happen then company can have its brand and company can really achieve social objectives i i cite one example 
last year i invested 1 crore rupees in uh, convergence and we got monetary value of 3 crore from the government it is drip irrigation it is transforming agriculture it is solar irrigation it is water conservation so many things are there so i think the potentiality of csr should be leveraged out the other you know uh, uh, developmental uh, dimensions are available that is a very important part so project define mean and structural analysis of local is very very important third thing is the reporting csr reporting is major area of concern as you know the many many companies in the country and the global scale they have been coming out the sustainability report when sustainability report comes the environmental footprint comes fast so before i mean i have not seen any report that uh, the you know after the noc been uh, you know achieved by the company to operate or uh, consent to operate and during that time the csr uh, corporate social responsibility and post profit corporate social responsibilities have been reported together it is always been reported as 2% is our things and i have seen that if you have got 20 crore rupees to spend this year so your report is only confined to that i think now this is a critical point most of the people demand that you cannot uh they cannot uh, do the environmental social cost they take the social and environmental uh, other cost to generate 2% and out of that 2% you have to make the things you have to keep you have to be compliant compliant in terms of the norms and uh, the you know rules and regulations of your operation be it your employees or be it your local community or be it your you know um, the local environment be it water or be it whatever the uh, sustainable development areas at the same time doing that if you do daily profit and out of that 2% you should really spend for you know uh, so the thing so this is another expectation that uh, csr uh companies are facing we have to you know uh, deal with the third and uh, uh, most important thing what i see that uh, you know uh, the select selection i mean money uh, you know uh, the, the the partners uh, selection is also very 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 very, very important thing. as i have seen most of the companies have their uh, own uh, you know most most of the guests i have seen the csr fund goes to your known people or known organization because you will see the agencies listed out are so many you know uh, government and non governmental uh, uh, you know units but that doesn't fulfill the purpose take for example a university been given money for the research and that research if it doesn't have anything to uh, transform the society or anything to do that and simple the csr and the uh, company's brand got lost i mean i have seen that companies those who have foundations and a, a, you know uh, regular uh, staffs are there or regular you know uh, structure been there as a foundation they are doing a marvelous job rather than give, go, giving it to the you know ngos and other people so i think that is a major uh, uh, challenge that uh, the companies uh, should really you know uh, are facing third uh, important thing is a uh, you know uh, uh, now uh that uh, you know uh, discretionary reports also the things you know when you say that you have spent because you feel that you have mandatory requirement to report to the government but you don't uh, uh, actually you know commensurate with that in the ground what is happening i have i give you an example the transformation areas like you know uh, like uh, you know in jk we have done you will very happy to know that within two years i mean csr money can be strategic money in terms of that 25 girls of startup uh, have started startups those who are tribals matrix failed this is, csr has the potential to should really uh, leverage out csr has brought out the the rural heart tribal heart csr has uh, you know made the 600 700 acres of land solar irrigated csr has transformed entire cotton field to the you know uh, g9 uh, banana and other things what i'm going to say is you must need to be innovative and innovative csr is one of the important area that we should invest in these things and research and development should be a major area of concern that no companies have the component in this at this point of time and uh, having said that i would say that uh, that is also another trend in csr we observe um uh, most cases uh, that uh, you know uh, uh one thing i think um, 
yeah see the spending of cs are also declining and that's uh, rightly dr rao has said uh, you know it's a prevention is very important rather than uh, you know uh, giving the focus on you know, i see giving uh, vaccines and all these things is very good this is emergency we have to see that long term uh, you know uh, a long term uh, sustainability in this case i see the livelihood if you have money if you have uh, power to do income if you have power to spend money and other thing then your immunity will be more and you can uh, for example organic farming you need to introduce you have to build up the things so having said that i think in a nutshell what i'm saying is csr is a law and business imperative and it's a new uh, newly introduced in india over 7 years what we have observed that no full proof model has come up yet you know giving donation is one thing but spending money and bringing transformation another another things these transformations locally requires research and innovations technology adoptions all these things full proof kind of thing so i think that uh, need to be you know uh, installed and i think after you know maybe a few maybe a, a, a few uh, i mean 5 6 years more we may come out to the stage and uh, now the csr has been very stringent if you cannot spend money in same year you have to you know uh, uh, transfer this money to a designated account you have to spend in 3 years that is a category of a regular uh, project that's a, a new project so many things has come up and the penalties on company which has not yet been a very prominent and visible trend but coming days it is going to happen that so i think companies should consider this thing and i am very happy sustainability climate actions see for example carbon footprints and uh, the technology adoption is key carbon emission mitigation is very very important area of concern and many many manufacturing areas are completely you know violating those things and this also a question i think now this transition should uh, take a step so i think in an or self corporate social responsibility in two dimensions before profit and after profit should be defined properly and we should go for that thank you very much i think this is my views i think if question comes then i can uh, take it up thank you sir for your nice deliberation i request all the participants to put their questions on the chat box so that at the end of the particular discussion we focus on the question answers now i will move to our third panelist dr santosh kumar mishra so before i hand over the podium to dr santosh kumar mishra let me introduce me dr santosh kumar mishra is a human resource and corporate social responsibility professional having 20 years of experience in various functions sir has done his post graduate in industrial relations and personal management and after that sir has worked in various organizations then sir has joined in tata recruiters limited belpahar odisha since 2005 and sir has served in important positions including the head of various departments like human resources development public relations and corporate social responsibility presently dr mishra is heading the public relations and the corporate social responsibility departments in tata recruiters limited belpahar so i would like to request Uh, Dr. Santosh Kumar Mishra, sir, to highlight on today's topic, sir, please. Yeah. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, thanks to ASBM University and Professor Pati for giving me an opportunity to share my insight on this subject. I am privileged to listen to eminent speakers like Dr. Rao, uh, Dr. Dhal, and of course, I am eager to listen to my long-time friend, classmate, and roommate, Mr. Kumar. I would like to start uh, my speech with a famous quote by Sir James Tata, the founder of Tata Group, and that is, "In a free enterprise, society is not just any other stakeholder, but the very purpose of it." Remember, friends, this was the thought with which he has started. He has started the group more than 150 years ago, and the group is still existing, and is one of the biggest multinational Indian business houses in the world. the thought is very much relevant in even today's scenario because there is a plethora of evidence where successful uh, businesses uh, have 
crafted their sustainability, uh, 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 which is scripted on the meaningful CSR uh, strategy. So from here, from here, I would like to uh, start my uh, giving uh, you know, examples of what are the challenges people are uh, CSR is facing. My challenges are two types. One is uh, it is based on the perception, and another is based on the practitioner's uh, perspective. The first and foremost challenge for CSR is that, though being a significant constituent of triple bottle line approach for business sustainability, CSR till today is practiced as a philanthropic activity. This perception has started shifting after the enactment of the Companies Act 2013, but the passion and compassion for social development is yet to be seen. You can see that in many organizations, there is no dedicated CSR team also, unlike uh, HR, operations, marketing. In many organizations, there is no dedicated CSR team. You can see uh, certain figures. I would like to give some certain figures from India CSR 5-year and 100 crores report published in 2019 that reveals that despite of enactment of the Act, in four years, out of 100 crores prescribed amount to be spent in CSR, only 50,000 crores has been spent in CSR by Indian companies. 36 of the companies which are falling under the ambit of compulsory CSR have not shared any data on CSR spending. 15% of the prescribed amount is not spent. These are the figures that depict a challenge for CSR that is it's not, it's done on the basis of uh, philanthropy. There is no, there, uh, there has to be a shift of parity the way companies view CSR. And this will bring a lot of prospects for CSR as well as social sector as well. The second challenge I would like to fight is CSR is not a one-size-fits-all approach in India. India is a very huge country, large country, and uh, there is a plethora of social, economic, and environmental problems and challenges. There is no panacea that uh, will solve all these problems. Hence, there cannot be a single corporate social responsibility strategy or approach. The strategy, CSR strategy in one region may be inappropriate or irrelevant for another region having different uh, kinds of CSR problems and different kinds of developmental aspects. Given the diversity and the level of development in different parts of the country, CSR cannot be a one-size-fits-all approach. So it gives a lot of scope also in research in the field of CSR to understand the diverse social issues of different regions based on which companies can develop effective CSR strategy. The third uh, challenge which CSR is facing is developing high impact CSR programs. In my previous speakers have, uh, have also thrown some lights on that. CSR should focus on developing high impact CSR programs rather than focusing on what programs need to be undertaken. Ironically, this aspect is missing in most of the CSR programs which uh, different companies are undertaking. Spending CSR resource, uh, spreading CSR resources across many small programs dilutes the meaningful impact. CSR practitioners should focus on fewer impact priority as for the capabilities of their organizations. Similarly, high impact programs can also be developed uh, by focusing on marginalized sections of the society. Strong CSR programs leverage the corporate assets, competencies, and connections in non-commercial yet strategic way to strengthen the impact of their CSR spending. The next challenge which uh, uh, CSR in India is facing, not only in India, in uh, other countries also, they are facing is developing agility to respond to uncertainties. As Dr. Rao has said, meaningful CSR programs take a long-term uh, understanding, planning, and implementation time. However, we are living in an uncertain world. We are in a dynamic world, dynamic world which are and surrounded by uncertainties. Your entire CSR focus changes with a simple change of government policy or natural calamity sector. For example, the outbreak of COVID-19. It has changed the entire CSR focus overnight. Barely 15 days after my uh, board has uh, approved, the board had approved uh, my annual CSR action plan for 2021, COVID-19 hit India, and our CSR priorities have changed overnight. 
within one year my rule changed uh, from a csr professional to a covid warrior now i am managing uh, uh, covid care centers vaccination centers uh, distribution masks sanitization and uh, in charge of taking care of the covid uh, patients in the society no another example i would like to give uh, that we were running a highly effective uh, village sanitization program that is called as progress jagruti since 2004 under this program we, we used to uh, construct toilets in villages and uh, village households in lakhanpur district of charsula uh, district but after the central government launched its uh, swachh bharat abhiyan uh, program all of a sudden the program became irrelevant but we continued our program in a different way instead of toilets in households we started constructing toilets in public places these are strategies should be far sighted at the same time they should be flexible enough to respond to changes the next challenge which csr is facing uh, is uh, ensuring sustainability of csr program my dear friends ensuring sustainability of csr programs is also a big challenge in india this is the uh, sustainability sustainability in csr programs cannot be achieved without the participation of the local communities in these programs it is seen that there is a lack of interest of the local community in participating and contributing to csr activities here it is to be understood that the role of csr uh, uh, is of an enabler or a facilitator at the same time there is a role to play for the beneficiaries also therefore organizations should strive to spread awareness about the csr activities and instill confidence in the local communities about such initiatives to make the projects sustainable the next challenge is what uh, others have also uh, highlighted that is the unavailability of capable and professional implementing agencies in remote areas sometimes if you are having too many choices then it is also a problem in india that is happened uh, that has happened in case of choosing ngos it is seen that there is no uh, the non availability of well organized ngos in remote areas uh, and rural areas that can assess uh, and identify real needs of the community and work along with uh, uh, organizations to implement csr projects there is a need for capability building of the local ngos because there is a serious dearth of trained and efficient organizations that can effectively contribute to the ongoing csr activities initiated by the company because of this projects are getting affected and companies are finding it difficult to scale up their csr activity then come one big problem is dealing with public services when we talk about csr uh, a number of people raise their eyebrows there is a growing public cynicism on csr activities this is because uh, this has become and uh, this has become worse with the advent of social media malicious social activists immature village uh, heads and unprofessional web channels rumors are now becoming news and the public start viewing csr as activities by the companies as a if uh, as an effort to cover their wrongdoings companies need to be very careful therefore and uh, this they need to be very transparent while they are communicating the objectives of their csr program and i would recommend that just like employee engagement companies should need to focus on social engagement strategies to address such issues csr uh, is facing another challenge that is uh, csr done with the motive of pr you can see that my or uh, my designation is man uh, dgm pr and csr i will explain uh, that there is nothing like that a number of corporates are uh, not only in india but also in the other countries uh, see csr is an opportunity for enhancing their public relations building corporate reputation and brand promotion this is called as promotional csr the main aim of main aim of this promotional csr is uh, to promote more visibility they are not focusing on real social issues and with their uh, limited knowledge on social and environmental matters uh, these companies are undertaking csr actions for greenwashing only without a real social goal using chaotic csr uh, actions 
uh, the companies can only have a short term impact. This is my assessment. And uh, from my experience as a PR and CSR professional, I can say that PR doesn't make CSR. With efficient PR, you cannot make CSR. But if you demonstrate honest and effective CSR, PR will happen automatically. This is my experience uh, during the last five years I am in this field. So if you demonstrate honest and efficient CSR, PR happens automatically. You don't, you don't have to work anything for that. The last, uh, uh, but not yet, of course, there are several challenges, but one of the main challenges is that uh, uh, now we have to adopt an outcome driven approach for CSR programs. You can see that, that uh, I have seen uh, uh, while I am going through, I have gone through the websites of various uh, organizations. I went through a plethora of fancy uh, photographs of uh, smiling children, smiling women, smiling farmers, uh, activities, uh, photographs of activities with a focus on the brand of the uh, company and very glorified uh, and uh, catchy, uh, you know, headings. And by doing so, these companies are just showcasing what is happening and in their reports also you will find that how much amount is spent in which sector and which area but they are largely silent about what was the problem how the problem was resolved and what is the outcome the outcome part uh, in many of the uh, uh, organizations csr report remains blur while we are having uh, KPIs for measuring the performance of various uh, management functions like HR, um, performance management, uh, marketing, others, and other uh, functions, but in case of CSR, we do not define clear cut and well uh, defined outcomes to measure its effectiveness. Now, this is a challenge which CSR for, uh, professionals should uh, focus on that also. And to sum up, I can say that there is a need of paradigm shift while planning and executing CSR. As it is said by Mrs. Narayan Murthy, that we should not do CSR because we are supposed to do. Rather, we should do CSR because we want to. And uh, India being a diverse and uh, first developing country, the CSR issues are many. The CSR issues are many, and in addition to it, the government has amended the Companies Act just recently in 2021, and which has become the CSR laws to be very stringent also. All of this makes CSR very challenging, and the challenges are varied. At the same time, this scenario offers vistas of prospects for the future CSR professionals also. With this, I conclude. I express my gratitude to ASBM University for allowing me to share my insights on this subject. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your nice delivery, sir. Now, I would like to invite Professor Pramod Kumar Sal, sir, to address the session. Before I hand over the podium to Pramod Kumar Sal, I would like to introduce him. Mr. Pramod Kumar Sahu is currently working at NTPC Limited as additional general manager in HR and CSR area. Sir did his MCA from UC Dula and after that, Sir has completed MBA in HR from Indira Gandhi National Open University. Sir has also got training from Cambridge University in CSR and sustainability. Sir has also attended management mentor program at Harvard Business School. Sir started his career at uh, Satyam Computers after completing his MCA from UC Villa. Then uh, Sir has joined NTPC and, and in NTPC, Sir has worked around 14 years in IT and ERP section. Then Sir has joined as a Deputy General Manager in uh, Power Stations of NTPC and Sir was heading HR group in performance management, learning and development, CSR and welfare. 
Sara is also headed as the regional learning institute of NTPC at Srinagar. Currently, Sara is posted at corporate CSR at Nomada Corporate Center of NTPC as additional general manager. Sar is a voracious reader and he loves to read and play cricket. With this brief introduction, I would like to invite Mr. Pramod Kumna Sahu. Sir, please. Sir, please join me. Your voice is not audible. Thank you, Professor Pratap. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. Uh, eminent uh, all esteemed panelists on the board and my dear audience, uh, Dr. Rao, uh, Mr. Dhal, Dr. Santos, oh. and everyone. And uh, this is a privilege that uh, I will be sharing my insight of my experience from a technocrat converted into an HR professional. And looking at perspective of CSR and welfare, Basically, uh, I'm not a trained, I have to be very honest, I'm not a trained MSW or even personal management person. Uh, but still, due to my passion, I have shifted my profession to this area. And to be very honest, this is the most satisfying profession which I have experienced out of my 23 years of working with all private sectors and public sector. And uh, to be very honest, in this panel, I'm the only public sector uh, panelist so the challenges which I am facing, basically, I do have an experience of field level, uh, three years of experience in my uh, Talcher Kaniya uh, power station of 3010 megawatt, then a Shimadri of 2000 megawatt, now into a corporate uh, CSR group, having pro policy advocacy and policy implementation group. I can uh, uh, just encapsulate the challenges in two perspectives. For the implementation perspective and for the conceptualization perspective. As Dr. Santos has rightly said and Dr. J.P. Rao also set the tone initially, CSR transition from philanthropy to corporate social responsibility is it the most important and paramount transition or transformation must say in any of the company's uh, governance system. Uh, CSR is not a context of uh, peer or it is not a context of uh, 21st century. CSR was existing from the Vedic, Vedic ages of India when your uh, uh, Vedas also pro professed about CSR activities, Chanakya, Sarthasastra also talked about, and even the different uh, Sahita, Sahintas, Veda Sahintas also talked about the benefit and the welfare of the people of the society. When you say Vasudeva Kutumbakam, it encapsulates the total doctrinal professor, the philosophy of our Indian custom for co corporate social responsibility. But when it took a shape of a statutory or legal uh, legal uh, act, it becomes a mandatory uh, subject for all the corporates. But what are the challenges? I must confess, the first and foremost challenge is CSR lacks professionalism. In any of the companies, corporate uh, sector, we find the HR fraternity, the HR department has the additional responsibility of executing CSR in the ground level. Many a times what happens, the HR uh, person who is looking after welfare, looking after industrial relations, looking after competency management, talent management, he is bestowed with the responsibility of corporate social responsibility. And sometimes it becomes an uh, uh, in inhibition. And I must say, it is a feeling of the uh, HR professional that is a socialistic uh, personality which builds into when you become a CSR professional. CSR wala agaya. When you go to talk to any of the authority, the first statement comes CSR wala agaya. So that is the fundamental deterrent of uh, the psyche which builds between uh, uh, in a professional that CSR is a mundane job. It is not uh, got that type of uh, prominence or uh, importance as other profession of uh, any manufacturing industry or maybe knowledge industry. When you become an engineer in operation services or become a manufacturing or a maintenance engineer and you are a professor of CSR, it is always a demar demarcation or discriminatory thought in the management that is a CSR uh, is a mundane job. Second, the absence of what is real CSR, it has to be understood by the public. Many a times, uh, because in private sectors, I don't think uh, uh, my colleagues or the, uh, my panelists, those who are facing that challenges, 
in public sector you have to have a lot of masters when i was heading csr in the field in the power station there are three different uh, political groups was operating in that particular power station nearby vicinity well, i don't want to name party a who is in power in the state party b who is in power in the center and party c which is not in the power but is having the uh, muscle power uh, within him so all the three masters are having the same say in the csr activities in your uh, in their own way so that is the greatest challenge for us to execute csr task as per your ideology as per your conceptual ability as per your understanding to the real uh, practicality which you face in the day to day business third one is interference from govern government machinery uh, i must say that uh, what is csr has to be trained to all government executives those who are at the helm of the affairs because many a times there is the, there is a feeling that the delegation of uh, the responsibility from government machinery is the responsibility of the csr professional if a road is to be built by pwd or the district collector has to instruct the rural sanitation or rural welfare or sanitation department rwss to construct some of the bridges for water rejuvenation at the same time this is being delegated to any of the corporate which is nearby established for developing that kind of projects so this type of things has to be very it's okay if it is a rejuvenation project for water it's okay if it is a sanitation project if it is okay it is a educational incremental education project but if it is a distribution of sanitizers distribution of uh, umbrella distribution of kambal all these things also being pressurized by government machinery for the corporates to do you cannot deny the fact that the poverty line of the periphery villages or vicinity it also compels you it instigates your mindset your com compassion to do something but it's not csr so you have to differentiate between a transactional csr as dr santosh has said as a strategic csr csr is the value addition of an activity which is being fundamental to the society suppose a road is built csr is not to build a road csr is to see that after building the road the transit the commutation of the transportation or educational facilities of the village has to be increased the village people has to be empowered in their own way for self generating income this kind of things are real csr and uh, fourth is uh the administrative mechanism of the corporate sectors what happened as a policy uh, member when you see from the corporate side there is a lot of uh, to be very honest i am proud of to belong to a company which is sending near about 300 crores per year for csr activity and in 2009 20 21 for this uh, covid scenario we have spent year mark we have crossed our uh, allocated quota of 300 crores and we have spent around 450 crores for this but the preventive health care covid just like dr rao has said and uh, the mr dhal has said when covid has uh, started uh, the second wave has started we have to we are building now near about oxygen generating plants in 11 of our stations but beforehand the proactive csr practice approach the pro proactive csr approach should be established should be ha should you have a plan for proactive csr and for educational system i must say there are two things which are fundamental to any of the society one is education another is health if the society is not being robust and is not being strong in these two aspects the society is not going to grow whatever your uh, gdp grows or industrial development is happening but if you are uh, not growing in these two aspects you are not going to build a society as a whole for that uh, we have started one uh, new initiative uh, rashtriya abhiskar anusandhan program wherein we envisage that for our education system the vernacular system of odisha where the school people the school children they has to be uh, interest they have to create interest in mathematics and science for that reason we have uh, associated with some organization headed by uh, dr s c bama of iit kanpur and uh, that was doing a fantastic task but for that i have to struggle a lot i have to convince the, the, the district education officer that this program will contribute to your uh, school in this way because they have not aware of the different programs of government of india and how it strategically benefit 
their own people so these are the real cha- challenges and another challenge is the transition from philanthropy to csr uh, social responsibility it is a quotation said that uh, before addressing the intellect you must address the interest of the people interest of each individual is in getting some commodity to its own benefit when i was distributing the uh, umbrella to the school children distributing umbrella to the village people to be very honest when i was initially given the task of csr i was also very uh, very much interested or excited about to see my photograph in a pamphlet uh, distributing umbrella to the people and thinking that this is a devdoot coming from the uh, heaven and uh, doing all the sacred task in the uh, in the society but after one year i really realized that this is not csr csr is something different you have to enable people to purchase the umbrella you never distribute kambal to the uh, obviously to the poorest of the poor to the old you have to do certain things which is the mandatory requirement but at the same time you have to enable each and every individual of the society so that he can understand his own duty his or her own duty and he can uh, empower himself or herself to generate some money there is a program called mushroom cultivation we part associated 60 Uh, gramin village uh, village ladies into 10 self help groups and we cult- uh, train them for cultivating mushrooms in that those area and i am proud to say uh, see that one uh, lady from that particular group she got the uh, chief minister's award and she became an entrepreneur but 59 ladies those who were being trained they became only cultivator of their own uh, bagicha and get the mushroom for their dinner and lunch so this is also one of the challenges to tell people that enterprising mindset has to be inbuilt among the society or among the group to do something great and the another challenge is end to end integration of csr activity suppose you start in csr activity with a good intention but how come it is sustainable the sustainability is the major challenge for that you have to have a end to end integration from field to fiber from fiber to your factory from factory to the market so that integration has to be established by the corporates for that you have to have a team of professionals you have to have association with ngos who is having the real intention to serve i must say with very pain in at my heart that there are lot of ngos who are really manifesting their uh, interest towards uh, corporate social responsibility but originally or practically they don't have so that is the pitiable thing you cannot uh, differentiate between sometimes this happens na you uh, some sadhu has done something uh, miserably wrong for uh, the society then you paint all sadhus in a single brush so that happens but there are lot of ngos who are doing wonderful things in the society so that you have to be uh, differentiated and you have to be associated at the same time i must say there should be some r&d establishment or institutional r&d to be embedded in csr system because many of the csr executives those were practicing uh, sorry those are practicing csr are not passionate about the job they are doing csr because they are supposed to do somebody has to stay in some place so he is finding out some of the way to belong to any of the department to do something so this kind of uh, uh, adhocism in a professional csr approach will not do uh, better or do justice to the profession and finally the leadership has a major role in csr uh, implementation and many of the organizations or the setups when i see from the policy side to the implementation side there are a gap existing policy side when you create some of the policy just in my organization we have created 10 policies for water rejuvenation for learning level improvement we have a conducted one girls empowerment mission program in 40 of the stations Yeah, incurring cost near about uh, 30 to 40 crores but the sustainability of the program is the more important because uh, girls of 120 to 130 girls they are coming in a summer vacation staying in our own campus getting trained in art education mathematics science phil- philosophy everything art uh, drama and uh, all the kudo karate different type of activities but what happens after that the sustainability of those systems has to be in place so this kind of leadership has to think in that direction and my friend santosh has really expressed the view that uh, from a transitional csr to a creative csr 
from a creative csr to transformative csr it is a journey and we started from our early historic age and now in a stage where the statute has mandated us to do something but section 135 schedule 7 is not the uh, ultimate uh, destination of uh, csr uh, implementation csr implementation lies in here in your heart if you wish to do something for the society corporate will come out with their all the resources 2% is a benchmark for the minimum spend but it is not the final spend you can spend more but spending is not the everything spending with a judicious purpose spending for the total society having outcome having impact to the society that is the more and the foremost importance for any csr to be executed successfully thank you very much audience to give me a very uh, listening and all the panelists to share their thoughts lot of learning for me to note down and check out in my profession and from my small experience of uh, csr uh, this is from my side thank you very much thank you sir for your nice deliberation now we have come to the end of the webinar now i will to read the question yes. there are some questions from the participants <laughs> So there is one question from Sonia Sri Mahanti. She is asking, is CSR activities and contribution only compulsorily applicable for PSU as of now? No, and it, is for, it is for all companies. Anybody governed by the Companies Act. It is for all companies. So I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, the question uh, probably you know, uh, as uh, Mr. Sahu has said very rightly, the benchmarking 2% uh, is the mandatory CSR has some strictures, you know, 5 crore net profit or 500 crore is your, you know, uh, 1000 crore turnover, 500 crore profit and 5 crore net profit companies eligible for CSR spending. This is the, basically the major perception and the law. So if any company does the, uh, falls under this category, they have to spend two percent of their uh, minimum two percent of their uh, you know uh, average uh, net profit of preceding three years are the CSR money. They calculate and spend in that way. That is technical definition of things. But very rightly, what Mr. Sahu had said, two percent is the minimum. But so far, uh, PSUs like NTPC are. You know, MCL or uh, uh, other companies have spent more money, but it has not been seen as a trend in private companies as yet. But as I said very clearly, that one question is there. I was reading that uh, SME, small and uh, medium sector enterprises, what they should do. I said very clearly that post profit is one CSR, pre profit is one CSR, and that is applicable to all uh, companies. Everybody has to. Uh, follow the environmental norms, follow the social norms, follow the you know uh, cultural norms, and uh, they are you know peripheral uh, 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 the PR and other activities or R and R other activities. So in this way, CSR need to be defined. Very rightly been mentioned that CSR professional is a big challenge in the country. Hopefully, it will happen in coming years. Thank you very much. I just Thank want you. to supplement uh, the that basically. The new amendment of CSR, wherein it said that uh, the profit, uh, the parameters of uh, CSR eligibility, uh, if a company just started this year, then also the next year he can uh, it can spend on to CSR. But yes, the will has to come. The will has to come from the management side, and the society sometimes creates because uh, it becomes uh, there are uh, very uh, there is a activist uh, turned uh, CSR professionals also. In uh, every village, you will find. They try to this city. They treat is uh, just like their own fund. So they try to just uh, give a direction to your CSR uh, strategy. So it has to very carefully uh, advisors, plan, and executed. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. There is another question from Sushil Kumar Pradhan. I is asking: Can CSR be a way to hide black money? Run by big companies or corporates. 
संतोष सर प्लीज एड्रेस या सेकंडली देयर इज नो देन कैन नॉट हैव ए स्ट्रेटजी फॉर हाउ टू इन्वेस्ट ब्लैक मनी डेफिनेटली सीएसआर इज कंसर्न्ड विद एथिक्स एंड दिस इज समथिंग व्हिच पीपल आर डूइंग आउट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट एंड विद गुड इंटेंशंस इफ यू आर हैविंग ब्लैक मनी एंड टू कन्वर्ट इट इनटू व्हाइट मनी देन दैट इज नॉट ए पार्ट ऑफ एथिक्स एंड इट इज नॉट अलाउड इन एनी काइंड ऑफ प्रोफेशनल बिजनेस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन Thank you. Thank you, sir. Another black money from... is unethical. You know, the CSR is very much related to ethics, and keeping black money is unethical. So those two cannot go one uh, hand in hand. There is another question from Sri Prabhat Mohanta. During this pandemic times, should the companies focus more on CSR activities or retraining? Are retaining the profit for business development? No, you cannot uh, uh, retain the CSR uh, spend which is requ legally required to uh, spend. You cannot retain that. If you have to retain that, then you have to create a CSR unspent account and you have to deposit it. And if it is not uh, spent within next for six months, then automatically you have to deposit in Prime Minister's uh, 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 fund, uh, relief fund. So, so uh, this what the Antoji? Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, what they want to know is, at this pandemic time, when there is a big challenge in business, should we keep money reserved for future, or should we spend on community service? So, our advice is, this is the most appropriate time to spend money on community service. If you are committed on CSR, this is the most appropriate time. Please come forward and spend that money. thank you sir thank you sir so as uh, there is a time limit we will end here yes. and uh, before we end the session i would like to read out the uh, particular points which are being addressed by our panelists so first of all dr gp rao sir has addressed about uh, three different challenges related to corporate sector ngos and government sir has also suggested on focus to ministry for development of the csr then sir has also highlighted on competent advisory body training of ngo and csr teams research and development projects strong governance and uh, recognition to various ngos small ngos also thank you sir for your uh, nice addressing <coughs> then professor prakula dhar sir sir has addressed about the csr activities and uh, how to Account this before profit and after profit, and uh, he has also highlighted on innovative CSR. Sir has also talked about R&D, research and development, and how to introduce penalty on various companies who are not looking after the environmental aspects. Then, sir, I am thankful to you, Professor Dr. Prakula Dhosa. <coughs> Then our third panelist, Dr. Santosh Mishra sir. Sir has highlighted on um, no dedicated CSR team in various organizations. Definitely, you are lacking it. Then, sir has also highlighted on all side effects that is which are basically not by the CSR activities like your single CSR or all. Sometimes what happens? We have different organizational structures, so we require different CSR strategies. No single CSR will help for all the organizations. Similarly, sir has also highlighted on developing. high impact csr programs then social engagement strategy also sir has highlighted and sir has also highlighted how to define the outcome for csr activity there should be well defined csr activities like other departments like marketing finance and hr we should have a good outcome from the csr then our sir thank you sir santosh sir for your nice address then our last panelist mr pk sahu ramot kumar sahu sir sahu sir has addressed very nicely different dimensions particularly two dimensions he has highlighted one is implementation aspect and another one is conceptual aspect and sir has also told how csr is lacking professionally there should be interference from government side but we have to transport the csr into different areas like transactional 
CSR has to be converted to creative CSR. Then this creative CSR has to be converted to transformational CSR. So we have to plan for proactive CSR, which the organization should focus rather than reactive. They have to be more proactive. Then Sarah also highlighted two important aspects of society. One is education, another one is health, which every organization should focus. Then Sarah also highlighted how to enable and empower the society or the individuals in the society. That is more important. And Sarah also highlighted on looking after the research and development as well as leadership aspects on CSR. Thank you, sir, for your addressing and uh, giving you. emphasis on CSR. And it's important. So, lastly, I would like to thank all our panel members and all the participants who have participated and who have asked various questions. I hope all of you have entered today's session. Uh, thank you all again for your participation. Thank you, sir. I also thank our president, sir, Professor Dr. Bishadil Patnak, and our vice chancellor and uh, register sir and all the faculty colleagues who have supported in conducting this webinar and the IT department who have also helped in conducting this particular webinar. Thank you all. Uh, thank you for attending this webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank you everybody.